been to Braemar Castle? You, you can, you've been there. <laughs> One or two of you have been there. So, do you all know where Braemar is? Where it's about an hour and a, half, it's about a couple of hours away. It's towards Aberdeen, next to Balmoral. So, for, for many people may say, well, this is a very uh, a, a rich area. It's, it's, it's a beautiful area. But actually, in a funny way, we're a little bit deprived as well because we're a long way from the centres of population, and it, you know, we're, you know, there is a bus that goes there and things like that. But so anyway, so that's that's what the castle looks like. So what I'm going to talk about really is a little bit of a journey for the castle, but also all the other things that are going on in Braemar, because Braemar is one of those. It's a small, we've only got 400 people, or 400 residents, or something like that, but there's an enormous amount going on. Um, so, these are the sort of projects that we got set up. Sorry, I meant to start my stopwatch, so I have an idea. <laughs> Give me a shout when I've done about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, basically, about 15, 12 years ago, I was on the community council, I was a treasurer, we started doing projects, and I thought, no, I don't want to get involved with VAT and big things in the community council account. So we set up Braemar Community Limited, and that was a charity, and the idea was it was going to deliver projects. And as a result of that, we've delivered quite a number of projects. Some of these are still on the, on the skates. So Braemar Castle was the first one we took on. Uh, it, was, it, it was, and it still is, owned by the local estate. And we're not in the position of ownership at all. And we're not, we have suggested that. I might touch on that in a minute. So we got a 50-year lease on the castle. It's now run as a, a community-run tourism attraction. For the first few years we had no staff at all, I'll, I'll come on to that. So we got 40 volunteers and we've, all, we've got one member of staff and we have seasonal staff during the summer. Um, and this year we've, we've had an increase of 20% in our visitor number, so uh, that's been a huge boost for us and I think that's, you know, we're in the tourism business, we are a visitor attraction. The last couple of days I've been at the, the Scottish Visitor Attraction um, Conference. So, you know, we, are, we treat ourselves very seriously as a tourist attraction and we try to compete at, their, at the level with, you know, Glam's Castle, Royal York Britannia. We're a long way behind them, but that's where we're aspiring to. So that's Braemar Castle, which is, I suppose you could say, our sort of headline uh, attraction, our sort of project. That the Hydro, that's another one which is actually very similar to what you're talking about. We, are, we had a community share, we raised 800,000 locally, and your 50% tax thing was, people couldn't believe it, that actually get 50% of their investment. If you put a thousand pounds, you get 50, 500 pounds back on your next tax return. And, that, and not everybody got on that, because you, have to, you had to be in the first tranche. But anyway, with a huge amount of effort, and going around to a lot of different people, a lot of local people and people a bit further afield, <coughs> we raised 800,000, uh, we got all the commissions, this is a project that we, the community have been running for the last 10 or 15 years. It started off with a guy with a notebook making uh, readings of the, of, the, of the water flowing over a waterfall and things like that. Anyway, it's now up and running. We're generating electricity. Um, we had our first AGM a few months ago. Uh, we have a rotor of volunteers who are making certain it works. Um, so that's been a huge success. Also, it's raised £7,000, which is available locally for projects within the community. The next challenge, of course, is we've now got the £7,000 in the Braemar Community Limited Bank account. We've now got to devise a system to, to share it out fairly for people who, local groups who want to make use of it. So, so that's the next challenge. Octavan, that's another uh, project of ours, which is actually a cro an old crofting settlement up in the hills. Uh, it's a self-guided self um, museum, um, and that was restored with Historic Scotland money and lottery money. But this was, about, this was a good number of years ago, before I was directly involved. So I don't know how, in, how easy or difficult it was at the time, but I've heard stories about how difficult it was. So, so we still restore that. St Margaret's is another project which we took on. For a, it was basically a redundant Episcopalian church. Sir so Ninian Cumper, who was a very well-known architect within ecclesiastical architecture, he built this place in the Victorian era, and um, it began to sort of fall down about 20 or 30 years ago. It was, you know, the, the design was brilliant, but the actual build wasn't great. Um, it was a, the, 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 the congregation bugged out. It became a, it was on the building at Ristlet Register, right in the middle of the village. A number of people came to Braemar Community and said, would you do it? We said, well, yes and no. 
and I'm sure this will resonate with some people, we said, yes, we will, but we need, some, we need a champion. We don't want to take on a project that actually will get egg in our faces in a year or two, and people will say, actually, what about that? So, well, so you need a champion, you need volunteers. And so for a while we said, yeah, we're very interested, but we're not going to take it on as a BCL project until we've got somebody who will actually... Anyway, a, 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 a team of locals came along and said, they will deliver it, they will run it, and they will deliver it. So... First thing was it was transferred into the ownership of the Scottish Redundant Churches Trust, so we had an ownership structure. They are then responsible for restore, basically for, for raising the funds to restore the building. And then there's a local arts trust which Braemar Community Limited have set up, and they run it. Last night we had a we had a big concert last night. There was a a, a, a jazz gang called. I uh, forget what they're called now, but anyway, from, they were actually from Glasgow, and very good, full house, so we do all sorts of different things. We have dinners, we have classical concerts, we have all sorts of things. So uh, the, the aim is to make it, uh, well it is, a community arts venue. So it's, it's really challenging to make these things uh, sustainable. So going back to Braemar Castle, the challenges we've had are volunteers, um, and I'm sure all your groups rely heavily on volunteers, and um, you need volunteers to do everything that you're doing, but you've got to recruit them, you've got to train them, you've got to enthuse them, and you've got to retain them. You get volunteer burnout, you get people who are, who've got their own ideas, you've, it, they're quite challenging, and you, then you've got, a miss, you've got a match between the volunteers and the permanent staff. Uh, and one of the things you were going to ask me was what is the greatest achievement for us, and I think for us is actually to have a, have a, have a member of staff. For the first five years, it was all volunteers, and my goodness me, that's such a responsibility and it's such a commitment. But when we were able to employ the first member of staff, it was a huge, it was a huge relief. But of course, with that comes a lot of responsibilities. We had issues with, um, uh, you know, with, with, with employment law and things like that, which actually became quite challenging for a short while. But anyway, we got over that, and we're now, we've now got a member of staff who actually can take a lot of the burden, because otherwise, the, the volunteers, you, you, it's almost a full-time job for, for certain people. Grants funding is a nightmare, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're all familiar with this one. We've had a couple of HLF bids turned down, uh, and we're now heading for the next one. Uh, leader, I'm sure you're familiar with Leader. I don't, I'm not sure it works in the cities, but it certainly works all over the, in, the, in the rural areas. Uh, we got a Leader grant for a, for, a, for a fundraising officer, but in order to get the grant, we had to employ somebody to actually do all the paperwork. And this guy was ex-Visit Scotland, so he knew his way around bureaucracy. He'd got fed up with Visit Scotland, so he, he set up on his own doing a little business, and he said, I'll, I'll help you. And okay, he, he did deliver what we needed, which was the, he, he got the, the leader project through, but he said at the end of it, he said, just don't ever ask me to do that again. <laughs> and that's been borne out by some of the people, some of the questions we're getting from the leader officers. It's, it's almost as if they don't want you to give, the, they don't want to give you the money. Small example, we set up a community office on the back of this because we needed somewhere for, the, for this person we'd taken on short term to work. So there was a room in the church, in the parish church, which was a Sunday school room, so we used that. That became the community office. So we got some second-hand furniture. The problem was, so then we put in the form, with uh, the receipts for the second-hand furniture. Have you got a certificate of origin? No, of course we haven't got a certificate of origin. In that case, you can't have your money. If we bought brand new furniture, we'd have had it. But it's just the sort of nonsense that these people give up. And actually, we're now really annoyed with these people. We're not, we're not exasperated, we're annoyed, because the level of bureaucracy that these people are going for... And I asked the, you know, the people... We are the National Park Leader team. So I asked them, I said, is this, is this Brussels? Is it Edinburgh? Is it London? Who's called? Who's he said, it's actually the Edinburgh bureaucrats. It's the Scottish government, which actually is a bit worrying. Because I thought it was naively thought it was, it was the Brussels lot who were causing the problem, but it's not. Apparently, it's the Scottish government uh, bureaucrats who are causing the problems, which is a little bit worrying. Uh, I put the word treasurer in there because if you haven't got a good treasurer, you're sunk. We have got a brilliant treasurer. He's an ex-chartered accountant, so he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's inevitably, he's doing lots of things within the community. But for a while, we had a guy who was fairly local. And I remember a couple of days before the AGM, bumping into him in the street. And I said, are you OK for the AGM? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you there. He never showed. He never came. So, so the chairman had to wing it that night. So if you, you need a really good treasurer, I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Succession planning, 
something we're all grappling with, and it's something that, you know, that we all think we're, we're irreplaceable, we'll go on forever, but of course we won't. So you need to have something, something. and linked to that is sustainability, and that obviously is, 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 is linked in with basically making sure you've got a good business plan, and that we're lucky with Braemar Castle, because actually we do have a, an income stream from the... Um, uh, so looking at the future, uh, we've now, we're now working on our 10-year plan. We've had the first 10 years. We had a big celebration. We had a big dinner at Mar Lodge. We had our first 10-year plan. So we're now looking at our next 10-year plan. We are at the moment a three-star visitor attraction, and we have taken the bold decision that we're going to be a five-star. It's going to take us a few years, but we're, that's, that's our plan. We're going to get there, and we're going to be a five-star. But there's a lot of work to be done before that. Master planning is all part of the process of getting you there. Business planning, you'll see the word planning a lot in here. Uh, succession planning, these are all things that the lottery fund require, lots and lots and lots of, the HLF require lots of these plans. Prioritization, so many different things we want to do. We're, we're just busting with ideas and lots and lots and lots of, but you've got to make certain actually that's get them in the order that A, they'll get the funding and B, they will work and the whole thing uh, works out. Uh, professional advisors, uh, well obviously we do need them, we've had a bit of a changeover of some of them, we're lucky we've now taken on uh, somebody who just left the National Trust for Scotland, we talked to him a few years ago, he was still working for them, he's now not working for the National Trust for Scotland, so he's been hugely helpful, but he brings with him the sort of the, the National Trust sort of bureau bureaucracy, which is not a criticism, but it means that you know he's very, very good on paperwork, which we're not. Um, Funders, again, as I say, it's always the problem is, you know, making certain that you've got the money and where's it coming from. Um, is that the last one? That's it. that's it. So that's probably all I want to say. There's lots of challenges in there, but happily talk to you later on. Thank you.